Hey traders, John Fortune here with this week's weekly Forex forecast for the 25th of September to the 29th of September 2017. I hope you had a great week last week. I hope you all had a good weekend. Just to say a quick thank you for all of those who came into the live room last week. It was completely free last week and we had a really good week. We traded the FOMC successfully and we took a few of the other setups in the pounds that we highlighted in those live sessions. There is still one week left of free access for the rest of September. We will be going over different techniques and looking at different setups during the week and it would be great to see even more of you in there next week. Now just before we jump over to the charts I just want to quickly point out that next trading week is a fairly unique week because we have New Zealand elections going into this weekend and we also have the German elections on Sunday. Now both of these events are going to likely create gaps in the market so just bear that in mind for anybody looking to trade euro or New Zealand pairs next week. So let's jump over to the charts and see where the money is this week. Starting with the US dollar index we can see the US dollar index in the daily chart here is still in this downtrend. And we have maintained below the downward sloping trend line, as you can see. Now, last week we traded into this downward sloping trend line off of the back of FOMC, and we started to decline from this trend line. And we currently sit between the key area of support at the 91.57 and the downward sloping trend line. So we're kind of contracting in this area here. Now, as long as the US dollar index stays below this downward sloping trend line, we are going to expect further declines in the US dollar index and a weakening in the US dollar. We're still looking down towards the 90.450 as the next key area of support and the target to the downside in the US dollar index. However, because we are currently ranging, we're going to have a neutral to bearish bias on the US dollar index. This means we are expecting further declines in the US dollar index, but right now it is still ranging. If we start to get a break above this downward sloping trend line, we will be looking to the next key areas of resistance to the upside at 92.945 and the 94.875 respectively. Next, we are going to look at oil. Now, oil performed quite nicely last week. We traded up above the key area of resistance at 50.33 and we are currently forming a bullish formation above the key area of resistance now acting as support at the 50.33. As a result, we go into next week looking for further advances in oil and I would expect these further advances to come pretty much from where we're at now, the key area of support at the 50.33. As long as we stay above this key area of support, we're going to look to initiate longs up towards the target of the 51.25. And then we also have a secondary target to the upside of the 52.22. Now, if we start to break below the 50.33 and this 50.33 area of support starts to fail, we will be looking down towards the 49.37 as the next key area of support to the downside. But as long as we maintain above the 50.33, we're only going to be looking for bullish formations and patterns to appear in oil to initiate those longs. Next, we're going to have a look at Euro US dollar. So looking at the Euro US dollar, we have been ranging sideways, as you can see now for a while. As long as we stay above the 1.18455 area of support down here, we're going to be looking to initiate longs in the Euro US dollar. And we're looking up towards the target of the 1.21050, which we've had for a while. And if we break through this target, we're going to look to more targets to the upside of the 1.21622 and the 1.22206. Now, in the event we do get a breakdown below the key area of support at the 1.18455, we're going to be looking down towards the 1.16942 as the next key area of support to the downside. And this would be a confirmation of a head and shoulders break in the euro us dollar 
The next pair we're going to look at is the pound US dollar. Now the pound US dollar came up just short of the target we had last week at the 1.36710. So we are looking still for this target to be achieved and we are still looking to initiate longs in the pound US dollar. Now we do have a support level to the downside here at the 1.34074. So if we get a pullback into this area, that would be a great place to start to look to initiate longs, start to look for those bullish formations and patterns in this area. And we're going to be looking up, as I just said, to the target we had highlighted from last week at the 1.36710. And if we can get a break above here, this should be clearing the way for a run up towards the 1.39400. Now, if we start to get a breakdown below the 1.34074, we do have two key areas of support to the downside highlighted in the form of the 1.33271 and also the 1.32274. Now, shorting between these areas may be a little bit risky. It may be a good idea just to look for these areas here to provide opportunities to continue this very strong move to the upside in the pound US dollar. The next pair we're going to look at is the US dollar Japanese yen. Now, last week we were sitting above the key area of support at the 109.940 over here, and we were looking to initiate longs up towards the target from last week, which was the 112.17 over here. And as you can see, we spent the whole of last week making this move, and we did hit the target, and we're sitting just below last week's target of the 1. 12.117. Now we are still holding this uptrend in the US dollar Japanese yen and so as a result we will look for bullish formations and patterns to appear in the US dollar Japanese yen next week and we're going to be looking up to the targets to the upside of the 112.914 and then the 113.727 if we can break above this first target here. Now in the event we get a breakdown below this upward slope in trend line and we start to get a breakout to the downside, we are going to be looking to initiate shorts and we could be on for a move all the way back down to the previous level of support at the 109.940 in the US dollar Japanese yen. Next pair we're going to look at is the Aussie US dollar. Now the Aussie US dollar was kind of ranging above and below the key area of support and resistance at the 0 0.79957 last week. We were looking for longs to the upside as long as we stayed above this key level of support and resistance in the Aussie US dollar and we were looking up towards the 0 0.81630. However, as you can see last week we actually broke down below this key area of support. This level of support has now failed. We're looking for this to come back and act as resistance as we get this bearish formation forming in the Aussie US dollar. Now, if we get a trade into the 0 0.799570, this is going to be the perfect opportunity to start to look for shorts in the Aussie US dollar. And we're going to look to initiate those shorts down towards the two targets to the downside of the 0 0.78. 547 and then also down towards the 0 0.77122 although this is a bit of a longer term target in the Aussie US dollar. The next pair we're going to look at is the New Zealand US dollar. Now before we begin just to reiterate going into this weekend we did have New Zealand elections so it is very likely that there's going to be a gap on the open of the markets involving the New Zealand pairs next week. So just bear that in mind. But if we look at what we can see now, we do have a key level of support here at the 0 0.73206. Now, if we stay above this key level of support, we're going to be looking up towards the target of the 0 0.73900. We're going to be looking for bullish formations and patterns in this area over here. However, if we start to break down below this key area of support, the 0 0.73206, we're going to be looking to initiate shorts if we get into this area down here. And we're going to be looking to initiate those shorts down towards the target of the 0 0.72419 and then potentially even down towards the 0 0.71918. The next pair we're going to look at is the US dollar CAD. Now the US dollar CAD is forming a large bearish formation known as a bear flag as you can see. Last week we were looking for potential shorts from below the 1.21705 area and we are still looking overall to these targets to the downside at the 1.20097 and the 1.18940. 
However, we said if we start to get a break above the 1.21705, we're going to be looking up towards the 1.23400 level as the next target to the upside. And in fact, for those of you who came into the room last week, we did in fact trade this move to the upside into the 1.23400 level off the back of the FOMC. It was an FOMC trade we took. Now, as we go into this week, sitting below the key area of resistance at the 1.23400, we are going to look to initiate shorts in the US dollar CAD. And we're going to be looking all the way down to the targets highlighted here to the downside, starting with the 1.20097. Now, if we get a break above the key area of resistance at the 1.23400, we are looking to the 1.24611 as the next key area of resistance to the upside. But just bear in mind that overall, this bear flag in the bigger time frames is intact. The next pair we're going to look at is the pound CAD. Now, the pound CAD is in an uptrend, as you can see, making higher highs and higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. It's starting to get a little bit squeezed over here. However, this uptrend is still intact. And as long as we stay above the 1.65943, we're going to look to initiate longs up towards the target of the 1.70111. Now, if we start to break down below the 1.65943, we could be in for some moves down towards the 1.63642. But we will, just to reiterate, be looking for bullish formations and patterns to initiate longs in this pair as long as we stay above the 1.65943. The next pair we're going to look at is the CAD yen. Now the CAD yen is sitting above the key area of support at the 90.418. We are looking for these advances in the CAD yen to continue and we're looking to initiate longs off the back of bullish formations and patterns appearing in this area. Now ideally if we get a pullback and a retest of the 90.418 this is going to provide an excellent place to start to look for those bullish formations and patterns to appear. Looking to initiate longs up towards the 92.029 and then also the 92.570 if we can get through that first target in the CAD yen. If we break down below the 90.418, then we are looking to the 89.715 as the next key area of support to the downside on this pair. And the final pair we're going to look at this week is the Aussie CAD. Now, the Aussie CAD is sitting below the key area of support and resistance at the 0 0.98531, as you can see, acted nicely as support over here, broke above and failed, came straight back through. We're now looking for this to test this key area of support and resistance as resistance. And if we get a pullback into this area, this is going to be a great place to look for bearish formations and patterns to appear in the Aussie CAD as we put in this bearish formation. And we're going to start to look to initiate those shorts down towards, first of all, the lows down in this area over here, but ultimately to a target to the downside of the 0 0.96142. If we do get a break back above this key area of resistance, then we're going to be looking up towards the 0.99446 as a plan B. But as long as we stay below this area of resistance and we get a tag, we're going to be looking to initiate those shorts. So that is it from me for this week, guys. As always, I hope you enjoyed this week's video. And if you did, please let me know by liking, sharing and subscribing. I just want to say thank you to all of you who do that on a regular basis and also those of you who have already subscribed. And again, just a quick thank you to those who came into the live room last week. Now, just remember, there is one more week completely free to come into the live room. All you have to do is click in the link below in the description and sign up and you will get access for next week. I hope you all have a fantastic week next week. I'm sure I will see many of you in the room again. Take care and don't forget to trade safely.